It's August 2016. The northeast of England has already been dramatically affected by cuts to the public health budget and a shortage of NHS funding. Bardo Najak has lived in Durham since 1971. As we follow Bardo around the city, it becomes clear what the NHS funding crisis has meant for the patients at the heart of the health service. Basically, my wife was diabetic. One morning, uh, it was a Wednesday morning, I remember very well, I couldn't wake her. So the ambulance brought us here. They put her on a glucose drip, and in about a couple of hours, she was okay. On Sunday morning, they rang and said, your wife is very poorly, come to me, Jeff. So I came, the doctor sat me down and said, I'm sorry to tell you, your wife had cardiac arrest. It was quite a shock, it was just totally unexpected. You don't expect people to die of low blood sugar. So I asked the nurse, when did you last see my wife? She said, oh, she went to the toilet about uh, two hours ago. There was one nurse looking out at 25 patients. Most of them were very sick. And so what I suspect, and this is my suspicion, is she wanted to go to the bathroom, she rang the bell, no nurse came, she was desperate, she got off the bed, went to the bathroom, maybe fell down there. Most people in medicine are dedicated people. We need more people on the front line, the nurses, junior doctors, doctors, consultants. She worked here, uh, first of all on the wards as staff nurse, and when she needed it, the health service failed her. That's what I feel. I noticed whenever you go to the hospital now, they get up, there's always long waiting time, because it seems like it's short staff these days. Um, I do have my auntie and that who works in the hospital. Uh, well, is she a nurse? Or, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a nurse. Okay. I think the nurses are overworked, you know? No, definitely. Not putting enough money in. You've got to have money to go through operations. You know what I mean? I've never been in hospital for all, really. But I've uh, heard of other people. You know, we struggle to get operations, getting knocked back and different things. But there's no work for the young ones at all, man, neither, around there. There's no doctors, for instance. I'm actually going through chemotherapy at the moment. Last week, um, I went down literally to get my bloods done. They found an infection and they couldn't do anything at that hospital because there was no doctors there. So I was then transferred to another hospital for the doctors then to see me there. So the 10 minute appointment ended actually up in the eight hours appointment. Um, the doctors do their best, but there's just, there's just not enough of them. You know what I mean? We need to be helping them. I went into A&E and I've never seen something so rushed and pushed they were working non-stop. You know what I mean? The doctor that actually seen me had just had his lunch and it was seven o'clock at night. Wally had a hip operation five years come October and it went very well and his other hip was fine until the last about 12 months. So we went to the doctor to a referral. He knew it was then ready for it to be replaced. The last time he went for his hip, and it wasn't as bad, there was four weeks from him being referred to him having his operation. It's now been four months. 
We can walk at my own speed if I take my time, you know. Just get the pain in the hip, you know, when you stand up. The last three months, you haven't been able to go out at all. And all he wants to do in his life is to be able to walk down to the paper shop, which is about 300 metres away, get his papers and get his lottery. He doesn't want any more, do you? No. And that was his lifeline because he knows lots of people and he stops and he talks to them. Well, now he's in a position where he's almost isolated in the house. People that work for the NHS are superb. It's yeah. just the, the weight, you know. That's the system. There's something gone wrong in the system that you're not getting seen as quick. There needs to be more money invested in training doctors. Mm -hmm. There needs to be more money invested in training nurses. I mean, there's people crying out for these jobs and can't get them. And when I worked for the Ministry of Defence as a fireman on an airfield, we were always taught the main object was to save life and when it came to money, money should be no object whatsoever when it came to saving life. Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt is getting ready to push through a new wave of plans which will starve the NHS of even more funds. They're called Sustainability and Transformation Plans, and there's one for every area in England. Hidden within them is a requirement for the NHS to make big cost savings. In many areas, that means frontline cuts. How can you reduce costs on something that's on, like, the last string, if you want to say it that way? You know what I mean? How are they going to do it? We're just going to go under, really, aren't we? It's not going to work. You know what I mean? So what do you think needs to happen? More funding. Put a little bit of money in for a few years, make it, make it efficient by all means, you know, if there's wastage and things like that. But it's got to be for everybody. Joe Public never had an upside in anything. Yeah. And what should we do then? Start a revolution. Yeah. Are we too old to start a revolution? Yeah. Forty years ago, ago we would have started a revolution, wouldn't we? I think it's one of the most important things. I mean, you know, <laughs> while all the population, I mean, I know I speak for myself, we are getting older and we need more care and more uh, health services. Yeah. And the problem is... It's you know, still a lot better than other places in yeah, the world. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. My well, sister chose oh, to yes. live in northern Cyprus. There is no national health service no. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still the envy. Of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. People in the health service are working so hard and working so diligently. I remember when she was on the wards, I used to come and pick her up and drop her, and she would be at half an hour, an hour late. And she said, yes, but I had a very poorly patient, and I couldn't just leave him or her. She devoted her life to working for the health service.